Okay, this is the 100216, non-carb compliant, 3650 running I bought this wheel kit. I was looking at making my own wheel kit uh, just with a like a half-inch rod and then some 8-inch wheels that I could put a half-inch rod, drill holes. I've done that in the past with other stuff, no big deal. But the wheels are like 10 bucks a piece, so that'd be 10 20 plus some steel, that'd be 30 bucks. This kit was 50 bucks. so, <clears throat> and plus it has a handle, and... Uh, you got to make sure it says check reverse side for fitment and when you flip it over it doesn't say what models it fits but it says look for this bracket and look for these little brackets right here um, that have the hole on each side so that you can attach your wheel to that and according to the picture here this one has it it has a bracket there and you can't really see this one but right here is the flat part for the handle so okay of course, if you're a fabricator, you can just make your own. Okay, so this thing got like really good reviews. So, <clears throat> like over four and a half stars. So, let's just see if this one lives up to all the other reviews. This will be the initial start, of course. We've got some oil in it, 600 mils of 1030. And um, just three things to do turn the switch on. Switch on, we'll come over here. We got the, I turned the fuel on already. That's closed, open, closed, it looks like. I'm assuming that's what the C and the O stand for there. So that's open. Choke here, we'll just flip it to on. That's the three things. Um, well, let's see here. Maybe a couple priming pulls since it's back. Uh, it doesn't have any fuel in the carb. Compared to this thing, the 7,000 watt one, this thing's loud. That's not bad at all. Okay, let's hook something up to it see if it runs it. 9 amp grinder. A little switch here. I guess this is nothing. You can go to 240 or 120. So. So this is my third champion generator. About 15 years ago, I bought one of their little like 1200 watt ones uh, just to take camping uh, for our little RV that we had, our little pop-up camper. And it's still, it's in that trailer still. I don't use it a lot, but we keep it in that motorcycle trailer. So if we have to run the compressor or whatever. Um, and I do start it once a year just to make sure it still runs. What I do do, what I do do is <laughs> shut off the fuel and let the engine run until it just runs out of fuel. That way the carb bowl is pretty empty. That way you don't have to take the my carb bowl plan apart. with this one is just to get it to run with my 120 volt uh, welder, MIG welder or uh, flex core welder. And it's of course a 120 or 240. But when I can run it on 120 and just have a small project away from the house, um, this will be nice because it weighs. That weighs 100 pounds, this weighs 200 pounds. This thing is a pain to lug around. And I'm, my plan is to go ahead and make a generator shed for this, but this lives in permanently. And so it'll just stay in there, and then if I want to do any welding or whatever, or I want to take the generator anywhere to do any projects or whatever, I just, I'll just take that one. And it's 100 pounds compared to 200 pounds, so it's a big difference. And that's probably the biggest reason I bought this, just because it'll be easier to drag around. This thing really hurts my back when I uh, drag, have to drag it for 50, 100 yards. And I've had to do that a few times, so it's not fun. Okay, I'm gonna let this run for, I'll hook up a load to it every once in a while just to make it work. And uh, we'll let it break in and then we'll change the oil over to synthetic. So far so, so good. This is a quick start paper that comes with it. It just tells you the basic stuff just to get you going. Fill the oil, blah, blah, blah. Um, put gas in it, I mean, all the obvious stuff, I guess. 
the manual here says to first five hours is considered break-in during break-in state at or below 50% of the running watt rating. Okay, so another reason I bought this 3650 watt over the 3000 watt was because of our altitude. I know that a 3000 watt generator from watching YouTube videos will run like a basic 120 volt flux core welder and that's great, uh, but at this altitude, it, the power's gonna suffer. It's about 3% reduction for 1,000 feet above sea level. So we're at 7,500 feet, so that's 20% reduction that I'm gonna have of this power output at my, at my altitude here. Okay, so no more than 50% of running, total running watts or maximum running watts during the five hour break in. Fine, so that bower is, that bower porta band is 10 amps. That little Harbor Freight grinder is four and a half amps. So that's about 15 amps. 15 times 120 is 1800. So half of 3600 is 1800. So let's see how they both run. Exactly five hours. Just ran out of gas. <laughs> okay, so that was this can, which is a 2.7 gallon can. Okay, and the gas level was about right here. Is that coming out in the camera? So, just so you can kind of see, that was about a gallon of gas. And of course, it didn't have much load on it. I was running the grinder, um, two different grinders and the bandsaw several times. I bet I made 20 different cuts on purpose. And then other times I just went and powered up. Uh, I had a grinder, a 9 amp grinder plugged into it and I just powered it up every 15 or 30 minutes or so. I'd walk by and just power it up and three or four times. And um, yeah, so now we'll let it cool off and we'll change the oil to synthetic. And then let's try it out on the welder. Okay, that let it's run five hours with conventional oil and intermittent loads of 1,800 watts or less. Now we can go ahead and change the oil, put synthetic, edit, synthetic oil in it, and uh, go ahead and run it at full power. So let's change the oil here. Looks like there's a... Uh, might be a little confusing what we're looking at here, but the dipstick, of course, this is the drain plug. And I just bent this little piece of metal just to keep it off the frame there. And I don't know, just the frame. Um, none of my oil pans fit underneath this, obviously, because... They're all made for cars and trucks, so 12 millimeter. Uh, and they say don't over tighten it. Okay, this is still pretty warm, so 550 mils of synthetic oil in it. And um, if you didn't see my other generator video on the big dual fuel one, the 7,000 watt one, I talk about this plug. This is, fits all my welders and uh, plasma cutter. And this is the L1430P. And this is, I don't remember how much this plug was on Amazon, but um, this is what fits everything for me. So that's what we're gonna use. Let's just see how well it starts now. Um, so switch on choke on, fuel on. Now I ran it dry, so I'm just gonna give this a couple pulls here, a couple priming pulls just to fill the carburetor. Can't beat that with a stick.
Okay, so that's obviously not working. Okay, so there, there. Let's go to 12 gauge. So at 18 volts, I think it'll be okay. gauge. 17 volts. So let's just run this off. Here. Okay, so this is the 230, 240 volt plug or 220 or 230, whatever you want to call it. It calls it 230 on the machine. That was um, 10 gauge, which is 19 volts. And you can see it just stopped right there. It immediately killed the, it really bogged the generator down and the welder reset. So um, then this is 18 volts, uh, 12 gauge, and this is 70 volts, 10 gauge, or uh, 14 gauge, sorry. 10 gauge, 12 gauge, 14 gauge, 19, 18, 17 volts. So 19 volts here again on the 120 volt plug and the 20 amp uh, breaker. So that uh, same thing, 10 gauge, 19 volts, it killed the um, welder and it had to reset and restart. And this is uh, of course 12 gauge and 14 gauge. So 19 volts, 18 volts, 17 volts. And they seem to do about the same as far as penetration and I mean, this, this steel was plenty hot. 